Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out. And it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be discussing in today's video is static equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we will be determining reactions for the objects shown on the screen. This will be our fifth part in this series. So what we have going on here is that we have a 300 pound beam, AB carries a 500 pound load at B. So the beam is held by a fixed support at A and the cable and by cable CD that is attached to the counterweight W. If W equals 1300 pounds, determine the reactions at A. So a lot of information here. Well, we already have the weight of the beam shown here, the 500 pound load at B shown here. Then we have a fixed support at A. So that's a fixed support right there. And then we have this counterweight W, which is 1,300 pounds. So this counterweight, if we assume this pulley is frictionless, this counterweight will come all the way and act right at point D along our beam right here. So we could write the 1,300 pounds like that. Well, when we are writing that, since we have to know the angle of it, we can just use this little dimension triangle shown here so we can use our slopes. Well, it is five feet tall to this point from D to C. And that means it is 12 feet in the horizontal direction. So getting the hypotenuse side for the slope of this line, we would have five squared plus 12 squared, square rooted gives us 13 feet. All righty, so now that we got that taken care of, let's go ahead and let's put on our reactions at A, our assumption reaction. So whenever you're using reactions or solving for reactions, you always have to assume a direction for them. And it's okay if you assume incorrectly, don't worry about it. Just means your answer in the end will come out negative. And that negative answer just means you assume the wrong direction, no big deal. So at A, since it is a fixed support, that means that we are going to have three reactions at A. We are going to have one in the horizontal direction, which I'm just gonna call a sub x, and I'm going to assume it to the right. We're going to have our second one be in the vertical direction, which I'm going to assume upward and call a sub y. Then we are going to have a moment reaction. Our moment reaction, I'm going to assume counterclockwise, and I'm going to just call it a m, m for moment. So a fixed support will always have three reactions. Um, maybe not all of those will have an actual value, but it has the potential to have all those three acting there. So we have an X, a Y, and a moment. So how do we solve for all these? Well, we are in equilibrium. So what that means is that when we sum forces in the X direction, all those forces in the X have to cancel to be zero. Same thing for the Y, all forces in the vertical direction have to add together to be zero. And same thing for the moment. All the moment rotations about one single point or any point have to cancel and be zero. So we're gonna utilize all three of these equations to solve for each of those reactions. So it just depends on which one you wanna start with first. There really is no wrong way to do it. Well, there is a wrong way to do it, but there's no right. There's no one right way to do it. Let's put it that way. Um, so let's sum forces in the X direction first. So I'm gonna take everything to the right as a positive number in my equation. Everything to the left will be negative. So I always include the sign convention to show that. So first, we have a sub x. I assumed it to the right, so it's positive. This is a moment, don't include it. Y force, don't include it. 300 and the 500 are both vertical forces, don't include them. We do, however, have the 1,300 pounds, which will have a vertical and a horizontal component to it since it is acting up and to the left. So it would be up and to the left for each of those components. Well, since it is acting to the left, it'll be minus 1,300 pounds. And then we have to use that ratio the dimension triangle ratio to turn it into an X force since it's right in between the X and Y. So your denominator here will always be the hypotenuse side of that dimension triangle. And the numerator of your ratio will always be the dimension that is in the direction you're looking at. So we're looking at the X, which is the horizontal. The 12 is in the horizontal direction here. So that's what I'm going to use. And that's all I have in my X direction equal to zero. So I can rearrange and solve for A, which is 1,300 pounds times 12 over 13. And that gives me a total of 1,200 pounds. Came out to be a positive number, so that means my assumed arrow direction to the right is correct. 
All right, so there's one of my answers already. Boom, done, over with, easy peasy. Moving on to the second one, well, let's just go right down in order. Let's just go with the Y here. And we'll take up as positive. Everything in the downward direction in this equation will be negative. So what we have right away, we have our AY going upward, so it's positive. And then the um, AX is in horizontal, don't include it. Moments, a moment, don't include it in the Y. We're going to have minus 300. And then we're going to have the minus 500, both acting downward. That's why they're minus. And then we have our 1300, which its component will be going upward. So it's plus 1300 pounds. And then we have to use the ratio because it's in between the X and Y. It's at an angle. And same thing again. We're going to use the dimension ratio to solve there. Hypotenuse side of that ratio triangle goes in the denominator. And then we're going to use the number that is measuring in the direction we're looking at. We're looking vertically. And the 5 is measured vertically. So it'd be 5 thirteenths. That's all I have in my Y direction. So all of those have to cancel to be 0. So my AY will be 300 pounds plus 500 pounds minus off 13 times 5 over 13. And that gives me AY to be a positive 300 pounds with a positive number. That means I assume the arrow direction correctly. So it is, in fact, in the upward direction. So there's another reaction done. Boom, moving right along here. So. One more to go, and we need our re moments reaction value. And to get that, what we're going to do is that we are going to sum moments about our reaction point of A. And the reason why we are choosing A is because when we choose A, A sub X and A sub Y will not be included in the moment equation because they go right through that point. So any force that goes through your point that you're taking moments about doesn't have a perpendicular distance, so it'll be multiplied by zero. So the reason why we do it at A to get a sub x and a sub y to drop out is a good idea because what if we screwed up a sub x or a sub y and we sum moments over here at b? Well, that means we would get the wrong moment for a m and we would miss every single thing. So at least doing it this way, we have an option or a chance to get at least the moment reaction correct if we messed up over here with a sub x and a sub y. We can also check a sub x and a sub y when we do a final check by summing moments at a different point, which we'll do that here after we get our moment reaction. So I'm gonna take counterclockwise as positive. Well, I have my assumed reaction here for my moment at A counterclockwise, so it's positive. The 300 and the 500 will both be rotating clockwise about A, so they'll both be negative. The 300 will be associated with the eight feet because it's eight feet away from A. So minus 300 times eight feet, and then minus 500 pounds, times a total of 16 feet away <clears throat> from point A. And then we have the 1300, which its horizontal component goes right through A. So let's not include that. The only um, one for the 1300 is the vertical that has a perpendicular distance to A. It will be rotating counterclockwise about A. So it'll be plus 1300 pounds times my ratio to get it into the Y direction, which is five over 13. This is my force. Now I need to multiply by a distance to get it over to A, which is a total of eight plus four, which is 12 feet. So that's all I have for my forces that have moment rotation about A. So that is be equal to zero. So you can rearrange and solve for your moment at A, and it pops out to be 4,400 pound feet came out to be a positive number, so that means my assumed arrow direction of counterclockwise was the correct one. And that's how I would solve for each of those reactions at point A, utilizing my three equilibrium equations of x, y, and moment about a point. Now, when you have the reactions problems, you can always double check your answers, and it's always wise to do so because it's a lot of potential to mess up somewhere, and it can always just be that you added something wrong or you subtracted something wrong. That's usually what it comes down to be. So a good way to check your reactions is just to sum moments at a different point. So since we summed over here at A, let's check by summing moments at point B. So let me scroll just a little bit here. So we're going to do our check. And we're going to do this by summing moments about point B 
and it still should be equal to zero. Everything should still cancel because it's all in equilibrium. There is no rotation here. So we are going to have my moment reaction right away, which is 4,400 pounds, feet, pound feet. It's going counterclockwise, so it's positive. And then I'm going to have my AY, which is going clockwise about B, so it's minus 300 pounds times its total distance to point B, which is 16 feet. A sub X goes directly through point B, don't include it. Next up, we have this 300 pounds, which is rotating uh, counterclockwise about point B, so that's plus 300 pounds times its perpendicular distance to B, which is eight feet. And then I have the 1300, well, horizontal once again goes right through point B, don't include it. I just have the vertical and the vertical is rotating clockwise about point B. So it would be minus 1300 pounds times five over 13. And this is my Y force right here, multiplied by my distance to get it to point B, which is just four feet. <clears throat> and then the 500, of course, goes right through point B. So we do not include it with our rotation about point B. So what does this come out to be? It comes out to be exactly zero. So that means that my reactions are correct. So there's always a way to check your reaction answers and it's always wise to do so. So just some moments at a different point that you summed at to find the reactions and everything should check out. And sometimes it may not be exactly zero. Sometimes it may be like zero point something. It just depends on how large your reaction values are, but this one just happens to come out to be exactly zero, which is a good thing. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you wanna see more problems solved this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel as we're trying to upload daily. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.